I'm not even sure. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Shop. Um, we are looking at uh, Peter taking on the role of Satan. Actually, there's a ton of stuff here. Yeah. Big text. Mark chapter 8, verses 27 through 38. Um, tons are going on. Tons to preach on. If you're reading this text on a Sunday morning, I don't know how you don't preach it. It's got, it's just got a lot in there mm -hmm. that people will be crying out for uh, some guidance from the preacher. So hopefully we can help you with that. Um, so yeah, let's get after it. Thief away, spit out my Lord in every way. Yet I'm still welcome in the yard. All right, Mark. Not always this Mark. Mark eight. <laughs> 27 to 38, uh, Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and, uh, and he asked a question. What do you people say that I am? Hey, there it is in the text again. Why do you keep asking these questions that have the answers in the Bible? Oh, okay. The Bible is our subject matter, All right? So yeah, who do people say that I am? And they got some pretty good answers, I guess. I mean, they're telling what people are thinking. You said when we were looking at this earlier that they were uh, safe answers or something like that? Well, their head's in their bets, right? Okay. Um, uh, although it's really weird, because if you think about it, um, let's see, you're the beheaded guy, come back to life. <laughs> uh, you're the guy who was taken up to heaven uh, and God decided to send you back down. Um, uh, or maybe you're just one of those others that, you know, in obscurity has shown back up. Okay. I don't know. It's, yeah, they're, they're all over the place. I mean, I, I think they were all questions of the day um, or answers of the day. Uh, you even see when Herod, I don't think it's in Mark, but when Herod no, hears about no. Jesus, that he, or that he, he thinks afraid. it's yes. John the Baptist come back from the dead. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so there's that mindset in there, and yeah. But you're right. There's More no. Can be said. There's no. Um, the, the disciples aren't saying that anyone's calling Jesus a liar. Like there's no like. Yeah. They're doing like oh they think you're crazy. They're all kind of like <laughs> they think yeah, you're okay. That's pretty yeah. good guy. Yeah. yeah. Important. Yeah. 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 There and there's definitely confusion about who he is. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, some are saying this, some are saying that, and and so, in other words, nobody can nail, nobody can nail Jesus down based on the expectations they have. Right, right. Which we talked about last week. Yeah. With the kingdom and how that comes, and yeah, uh, certainly, it's not conforming to what their right. ideals are. Right. Which is why, well, maybe not exactly why, but it's part of the reason seems to be why in Mark's gospel over and again, he, when people give a correct. Uh, understanding of who he is, he he kind of goes, oh yeah, shh, shh. yeah, which he, which he'll <laughs> yeah. do here again. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but uh, uh, yeah. It, so anyway, um, but then he gets uh, Corey. You, you mentioned this when we were talking about it. Um, he he gets a little more pointed with his questions. <laughs> yeah, and, and he does what? Well, he, he he's like, it, it seems like he kind of brushes off. He's like, okay, well, that's what people are saying. I'm really more concerned with what, who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. Let's get personal. Let's get focused. Yeah. And this is good preaching wise. Yeah. I think you said earlier, like you can, this is what you can do from the pulpit. Right. On a yeah. Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Right. What about you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, I, uh, that, that led me to C.S. Lewis's screw tape letters. If right. you've ever listened to him, I always say the, the, the wonderful thing about his, uh, that particular book is you listen to it and you go, Oh, yeah, I know how that could be a temptation for some, or I, I see how that's possible. Oh, yeah, I definitely know people he's talking about there. Oh, I'm pretty sure he just got to me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jesus is doing yeah. the same thing, right? Yeah. He's, he's getting down and saying, okay, we can, we can talk generalizations, but yeah. I'm really yeah. focused on right. you. But this is such a timely question, too, because uh, just, just recently um, uh, on the store rack, at the grocery store while I was waiting in line, you know, wearing my mask or whatever, uh, I saw there was a Time magazine, and on the cover it's, it had a picture of a painting of Jesus, and it says, and the question was, who is Jesus? Yeah, it's been a question that's been, been a asked question for centuries. For, yeah, it's good. 3,000 yeah. years, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Who is this guy? Yep. Yeah. Fair enough. 
And so what's Peter answer? What's his great answer? He says, you are the anointed one. Yeah, you are the Christ, right? You are the Messiah, yeah. And Jesus says, don't say anything. What? <laughs> but I got it right, Jesus. Shouldn't I be, shouldn't I be proclaiming that? Uh, yeah. Again, people will, we talk about this a lot when we're talking about preaching a text, is it's always tempting to pull in other texts to fill in the gaps. And, and you certainly do this here. You get some of this, uh, um, you know, where he confirms Peter, mm -hmm, this wasn't mm -hmm. given you by, right? But that's not really the focus here. And he just, he moves yeah. right through it. And, uh, and it's, so it's good to stick with this. So he, um, so he goes right from that, you are the Christ. He goes, okay, don't, it is right, but don't, don't say anything. Because as we're going to find out, you don't fully understand even what that means. Yeah. So what he does, I think maybe this way I kind of see it is, what he does is he goes, so let me fill you in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the Christ? Oh, he goes, this yeah. is what it is. The son of man is going to have a rough go. Yeah. He's going to suffer many things, be rejected by the elders, chief priests, scribes, and be killed. And on the third day, rise again. Right? I always forget that last line, but yeah, that's they, okay. Yeah, they, everyone tends to forget that, right? Yeah. Third day, right? So he's going he's gonna to be rejected. He's going to suffer. He's going to die and rise. That's what it is to be the Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love the uh, beginning of verse 32. And he said this plainly. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like, yeah. he wasn't doing the Yoda thing right. Yeah. right. He was like yeah. clearly telling them. This is what it's going to be. Yeah. Well, and right? I think part of that is there's a confusion after the feeding of the 4,000 back yeah. earlier in yeah. where he's talking about the leaven of the, the Pharisees, of the Pharisees and they they're can't like, figure what's, out what's, what's going, going on. on. Yeah. And so Mark is saying now, like, they're not confused about what he's saying. Yeah. They just don't like what they he's saying. They just don't like it. That's a good And that's point. the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what does Peter do? What's his response? I like what you said you've heard. Yeah. It, it, you know, the scripture says it... it Peter took him aside, yeah. but the kind of the emphasis uh, in that in that language is Peter's kind of rising above Jesus to kind of like rebuke him and like extend his authority. Like Jesus, come here, man. No one wants to hear about you suffering and dying. Like that's that doesn't that's not going to play well with the crowd. Like no one wants a prize who dies, right? Better like let's talk about you living and you like conquering. That's bad. Yeah. come on. Let's go out and do some miracles. Let's Jesus. go do some miracles, Jesus. Right? Like I'm just trying to help you. Yeah. I'm your marketing yeah. PR guy. That's right. That's right. Uh, we can't really sell it. Yeah. So it it is uh, fascinating. I've I've always thought of just like if you were like if you were acting this out, you know, like on a stage. Peter now is doing the one thing disciples are supposed to do, which is follow. Yeah. He's not following. Oh, yeah. He's leading uh -huh. Jesus to the side. Oh, come, come here. Yeah. Come here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> he's, so he's, he's pulling him aside. It's a bold move. Yeah. Bold move, Peter. <laughs> and uh, and so uh, he begins to rebuke him, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, then he turns and sees his disciples and rebukes Peter and says what? This is the connection with last week's text. Yeah. He calls Peter what? Satan. Sometimes yeah. you'll read it as, well, I think this one always is, is Satan. Devil is, is what also appears, but it, it comes from that Hebrew Satan for adversary or accuser. You know, right? accuser. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, yeah, you are not, you are. Not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Mm -hmm. um, I, from a, I've got a friend who always, he's got kind of a cin cinematic mind, and so he always thinks about how would this play out in a movie. And you almost get Jesus pausing, and, and you could almost like put, you, you might say Satan back on there, or, or do a flashback back to the wilderness, which again isn't in Mark, but... You know, Jesus, you can have all of this. All you got to do is uh, bow down, right? Uh -huh. You're the Son of Man. Just and that that in that moment, Jesus is being tempted again, mm -hmm. and and really going, wow, yeah, I am the Christ. I don't have to go down this road of suffering. And yeah. then going, wait, get behind me, get behind right. me, Satan, mm -hmm. right? So you know that that I think that I think this is. I think another thing that you could put, or another heading you could put on this is Jesus' second temptation. No. Oh. Right, Very good. Um, and and that puts it back in his uh, camp of him being willing and able to overcome our our faults. 
So then it's not about Peter's misunderstanding because we all have those. Yeah. It's actually about Jesus triumphing um, you know, yeah. over, over the adversary on our behalf. Yeah, and then the rest of this text really fleshes out, I think, what he's getting at when he says, you're not setting your mind on the things of God, but the things of man. And, and so, again, there's a lot here to preach on because that could be a whole, your whole sermon, yeah. just yeah. that part. Uh, so how you kind of work all this in uh, can be difficult. But, but so what does that mean? He, cra- he calls the crowd, and, and we were talking earlier um, that you're, you're kind of reminded that just because he's initially addressing his disciples, there's a whole bunch of other folks hanging out, mm-hmm. and they're all listening to this. So the crowd, the disciples, they'll get around them, and he addresses all of them about what it is to follow him, right? Mm-hmm. To do, to stay behind him, right? <laughs> Where Peter should have been, yeah. right? And, and I think it's an explanation of having your mind on the things of God. Mm, yeah. What does that look like? Well, again, it doesn't look great. It looks like a cross, right? Yeah. I can remember uh, professors always using that language of the cruciform life, right? Mm, yeah. That your life hmm. as a disciple comes in the shape of a cross. Yeah. Like it bears a cross. Yeah. Um, uh, hmm. So take up your cross and follow me, right? Which is a denial of what you're going to want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you can have a field day there yeah. preaching that. Yeah, well, and then the end of verse 35, right? For my sake and the Gospels. And what's the Gospels? The kingdom of God is at hand. Yeah. Right? And and again, kind of, wait, you're going to lose your life for the sake of the kingdom of God being here? I thought the kingdom of God came in power and glory and overcame Mm. enemies and all Mm. those kinds of things. I'm going to lose my life for that? What's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. And so, again, that kind of reversal of you've got to continue to turn back to God because the kingdom is not going to live up to your earthly expectations. Um, it's going to live up to your expectations, but mm-hmm. not to your earthly expectations. Right. Uh, it's not going to go the way that you expect it to. So, and uh, verse 37, then I think Jesus plays that out, that, that there is, you might say, life, and then there's life. Mm-hmm. Right? You can, you can gain everything in this world, but... You can right. forfeit that which is really eternal and, and really significant. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, what a so, what yeah. a crazy a crazy kind of assurance you can talk about. We um, we were back in Fort Wayne. I was with the Ringside guys uh, and doing some things. And one of the videos on if you go to uh, um, on our YouTube page, you can find a, a discussion with uh, Professor Pless on demythologizing the culture. Mm. They had talked about this language of, you know, the, these, uh, these progressive theologians 30, 40 years ago would talk about demythologizing the scriptures. Mm. He's like, our job as preachers is to demythologize the huh. culture. Huh. Like, they're yeah. all living by myths. Yeah. And these are some of the, some of the myths are the most tightly held things that you Very believe good. give you life. Yeah, and part of what you're doing as a preacher is you're chipping away at this, and you're exposing it as, as what what are you gonna gain if you have all of that? Yeah, in yeah, your life, right. Like like that's the myth, that's the lie you're living by. Yeah, right? yeah. And uh, and so yeah, you can check it out. I mean, it's it's just a short clip. I think it's like six seven minutes long, but um, uh, but that kind of thing uh, is a call for us as preachers. I mean, like this last section. I mean, depending on what's going on in your congregation, you could you could go pretty yeah pretty in depth yeah yeah uh, and start kind of exposing those idols that people are holding on to and mm-hmm. the things that they think give them life, especially in our culture. Yeah. I mean, this is so this is so timely. I remember driving and seeing a bumper sticker on the back of a car. The bumper sticker says, "He who dies with the most toys wins." Yeah, the concept that that myth. Yeah. That you're talking about is my life is about accumulating, accumulating. getting, yeah, true. and yeah. then Jesus saying, when you get to the end of it, you've got everything. What have you really won? You haven't yeah. won anything. Yeah. And suffering and dying is bad, right? Suffering world, and dying right? is bad. You, yeah. well, you should always yeah. avoid those yeah. things at all costs. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, for the for the right reasons, and for the, again, suffering in general, yes, bad for the sake of the gospel and and the son of 
uh, son of God, yeah. um, you know, is uh, is actually a, a win for us. A win. Right, because yeah. well, we're not right. sadists, right? We're not like, oh, right. I just love suffering so much. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's for a purpose. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, lots there to preach on. Uh, go to craftofpreaching.com. There'll be more resources there as well. Um, like, subscribe, uh, share us with your friends, hit that little bell button so you get the new videos when they come up. Um, yeah, save, uh, share some comments too about uh, maybe how you're going to preach this, what you think's going on in the text, something that, that uh, Matt missed uh, this time. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll look forward to reading those, but uh, God bless your preaching.